Good evening and welcome to Scorpio Clock News. I'm Alex with Enchanterium and I'm here to bring you the latest updates on Random Prompt Zodiac Challenge. The latest reports say that Scorpio is a water sign and the main stone on the tropical zodiac list is allegedly Beryl. For the Random Prompt, let's ask our correspondent and privately my dearest sister. Take it away, Barb. Good afternoon everyone, or should I say, guten tag. My name is Barb and I'm reporting here from Berlin where we will ask two random people on the street about some numbers and that will dictate our super random challenge challenge, random challenge for our Zodiac series. I think there's somebody there who can help us. Entschuldigung, Madame! Entschuldigung! Yes! Hello! Do you Hello. speak English? I do. What is your favorite number? I am searching for maroons right now and I found two so far, so I think it's two. There we have it, folks. Number two. It seems like that would mean the first prompt is cheerleader. Barb, will you be able to ask someone else for the second prompt? I think I spotted another man. Yes? What is your favorite number? Number one. He is number one. Looks like that's alien and that's a very exciting <laughs> news. I'm so pale. That is it for our report from Berlin. The numbers that we have chosen were lines. Mm. Fine, which is one and two. Back to you, Alex. Thank you, Barb, Elisa, and Joe. I mean, totally random people. We finally discovered that Scorpios are alien cheerleaders. Our team of experts is going to prepare the best design for this sign. Meanwhile, we got a new report in the economic field. The new cryptocurrency and Chantirium coin is doing a fantastic job on the market. Why am I watching this? After it's pre since we made a Cancer Zodiac doll, I was wondering how to make Scorpio look different. And when I found Widana Spider in our stash, I knew she would be a perfect candidate for both Scorpio and the Alien prompt. We bought her a million years ago and never used it because she's a rare doll in our country. And I'm always scared of using these rare dolls for customization because I know some collectors would love to have them in their collections. But I guess I don't care that much because I'm going to use her anyway. <laughs> this time I'm going to start customizing process for making hair. I have this curly nylon with a bit of tinsel sparkle and I thought it's going to look nice on a dark skinned alien. I was wrong, but hair is always tricky for me, so I'm not even surprised. It has a lot of volume, so I'm rerouting only half of the holes. I rooted the whole head, but I didn't like how it looked on the top, partially because they were falling on her forehead, but I want to show these gorgeous eyes. So I looked in my stash for some straight hair and I found these colors. I added them to the front and I had this genius plan to braid the hair close to the skin to hide the difference in the texture, but this plan didn't work for a few reasons. This is how she looks now, and the quality of the hair and the color and the texture look like a cheap clown wig. I'm sorry, but it has to go. I really like the green and the yellow. I hope you will not hate me for boy washing this whole thing to make it straight. It turned out that the hair is not straight, but it's just more relaxed. I actually had to redo the front part because the front line cracked, and I fixed it by gluing the parts with super glue and making new holes with a hot needle. Oh, so much work to rescue this hairstyle already. <laughs> like I haven't even started the proper customization. I rerouted the hair in sections because I have an idea for an alien kind of hairstyle. I just hope I can match the textures, but that's a problem for later. Uh, I need a break. Is this you? Uh, I need a break. Consider taking a break and immersing yourself into the world of Life Makeover, a new life simulation game. Customize your ideal home, invite friends worldwide to party or cook, and earn in-game currency as a model influencer. Explore endless possibilities, customize your in-game image, create your fashion brand, and become a clothing designer. New exclusive outfit sets are constantly being added to the game, with the newest release bringing you new gorgeous fashions available for a limited time. You know I'm a sucker for great clothing design and the Life Makeover team never disappoints. Gosh, I would love to sew a gown like this one day and the corset? Ah! In addition to gorgeous fashion, you can build your dream house and, you know, like, live in it and put some good furniture in it and actually use it. I'm not a great home designer, but I've seen some other players on the Facebook group make amazing, like, castles and submarines and whatnot. And of course, you can customize your own character. Every now and again, I like to freshen up my avatar's look, you know, since it's free, unlike real plastic surgery. <laughs> 
In the game, you can adjust every little detail of the avatar and of course, pose for cute pictures. If that sounds up your alley, make sure to download the game by clicking on our link in the description so you can discover the variety of features of this game. Thanks to Live Makeover for sponsoring and let's get back to work. Cheerleading is not really a thing in Poland because we also don't really have sports in our schools the same way it's done in the US. So the only reference I have is watching TV shows like Glee and that one big Netflix docuseries we all watched in lockdown. To make a pattern for the top of the outfit, I decided the good old tape method would work because nobody really makes clothing patterns for a six-armed doll. When I was happy with the amount of reference I've gathered in this tiny piece of tape, I cut it apart and made sure to add a dart to free the boob. Well, <laughs> okay, I guess this is my pattern. <laughs> Monster High clothes are laughably small sometimes. I cut out the top out of this blue fabric, mirrored, and I realized some gremlin has been shooting <laughs> on my fabric in this dash. No, it's not poop. Uh, that's unacceptable. Unacceptable! I'm joking, this is a joke. It, it's clean except for this speck. I traced and cut it from a different section and retraced the darts. This is a school team outfit, so it needs the school logo, of course. I made a quick Zodiac high vinyl decoration and pressed it onto the middle of the pattern piece. I think when we were discussing this series back in February, we wanted it to be a Zodiac high series, you know, like Monster High, Ever After High, etc. But we never really committed and the random prompt took over the general theme of the series. Are these official Zodiac high colors then? <laughs> I think so. They are sort of like ancient harem colors, but more intense. I added the darts and that's pretty much all sewing. I want to finish the edges of the shirt with some straps, so I prepared a trim made with the same two vinyls I used for the logo. Since this is very small, I will be gluing it to the doll to achieve a tight fit. I first tacked down the shirt itself and it might look a bit dumb, but when I add the straps, everything is going to start looking more like a top. Time to make a skirt. Wycinam se to, co sobie przygotowałam. Natomiast nie przemyślałam tego i jak nie wyjdzie, to będę w dupie, bo już więcej nie mam tego materiału. Ale dzisiaj zdecydowałam, że będę w siebie wierzyć. I prepared a quick pattern for a pleated skirt with the pleats being blue and the top of the skirt green. I actually regret that I used the neon green vinyl because it made the skirt bulky and Alex didn't end up liking the color. I started piecing the parts, alternating the colors. I like to do things like this assembly line style, so taking two sections at a time, then combining two sections together, and so on. I then took the time to put the pleats in place and clip them together so I could stitch them down to secure them. Haha, <laughs> I lied, because I first traced the inside and the outside of my skirt to make a bottom trim and a waistband. For a circle skirt, it works out better when they follow the shape instead of being a straight line, I think. I ironed the bottom trim on and decided to now glue the pleats in place before I stitched them together. I also made a waistband the same way. I glued it to the skirt and secured the back together, only at the bottom for now. Let's take care of the body. She already has six arms and that's pretty out of this world, but I want her to have pincers like the scorpion that she is. I started with a sketch and a lot of hot glue and tin foil. This will make the claws a little bit lighter than if they would be only from clay. Look at these tiny joints. They can't handle much weight. We need to help them. The next step is adding the clay. On the first layer, I care about the general shape and filling all the surfaces. I'm adding the second layer when the first one is dry and I make it more polished and smooth. Then I'm sanding everything, which was a waste of time because then I decided to change the shape, but never mind. You may wonder where the second part of the pincer is. It can pinch when there is only one. Aha, I have prepared a nightmare fuel because I'm going to use these monster high hands. I'm cutting the hand part because all I need is the joint. I saw doll motion using spare hands for posable ears in her mousse video and I thought I can use this technique here for the pincers. Pretty cool, huh? Off camera, I added some more clay around the joint and cute little spikes on the main part of the claw. And this is how they look. 
So cute. While the clay was drying on the hand, I took care of her feet. Just like our cancer doll, this one is getting a double foot removal surgery. Sounds very serious. And it is serious. But this time, instead of making the doll smaller, my idea is to make her a little bit extra tall. So I'm adding a wire armature for the clay. After a few passes of adding clay and removing clay, they look like this. From the beginning, I knew I want a leg gradient, like 85,714285% of our zodiacs. I didn't even notice that I do it in every design, but recently we got a comment saying that they form a set of characters because of their individuality and gradients. And I was like, oh no, is gradient a defining feature in Enchantarium's style? That's so 2010. But what can I do? I like it, and if I can, I will do it. <laughs> Since Scorpio is a water sign and we have a blue and green color palette, I want to make something fluid and looking like plants under the water. I know it can look like hair, but it's not hair, okay? And the same goes on the hands and the claws. It was not easy to record it because I have to constantly turn the painted limb to make the gradient look the same on every side. But it was fun and relaxing process. I thought underwater you can find some particles or bubbles, so I'm adding little light green dots. I think it looks like fluorescent plants on the bottom of the sea. And I really like it. It's finally time to draw a face. I'm going to use all the sculpted eyes and even make some more. First, I need a white base. I sketch the shape first and add white acrylic paint on top. I want her eyes to be the part of the alien prompt because I'm pretty sure scorpions have just black dots as eyes, like in some cartoons. Usually scorpions have from 2 to 12 eyes, so of course we're making 12, like <laughs> is there another option? <laughs> but what was a surprise for me is that there are scorpions with no eyes at all. Also, when you look at a scorpion, which eyes do you treat as the main ones? These side ones or these two? It's very funny how it changes the perception of a creature in our human brains. I painted her eyes in colors of the rainbow, because why not? And her lips bright lime green. Now, the makeup. I'm preparing a white base first and also sketching the irises with watercolor pencils. I love green makeup, so she's getting a lime green eyeliner. I'm actually mimicking the original Widana makeup, because if I do a light eyeshadow, the black eyelashes are going to be visible. I also put the dark blue color under her eyes, and it looked good on my concept sketch, but it didn't look good in real life, so I changed it for lighter and thinner blue lines. We recently got a lot of comments about how stupid it is to believe in zodiac signs, and I want to say something. Zodiac signs are like bitcoins. They have cultural and economical impact on people's lives, can be a tool of manipulation, teenagers like reading about them, and they don't exist physically. We believe in zodiac signs as a cultural phenomenon, not as a religion or a scientific fact. Hope that helps. And we have eyelashes. Wow! So I did this gradient, and now I think I have to do it 10 more times, which... Uh, wish me luck. I was thinking of doing the eyes only with watercolor pencils, like in the good old days, but gradients. I just can't fight the temptation. But I would prefer to make them only twice and not 12 times. The difference is huge, and I love the effect. I wanted to leave her like that, but Barb said more details, which usually I am this person saying that. So I'm making more details, like the pupils, but for an alien twist, let's make them white. And like almost always, I do a sketch with watercolor pencils first and then add the white acrylic paint. She's a water sign, so I feel like skipping a water line would be weird, so I'm adding a white line on the bottom part of every eye. Off camera, I added these thin lines to the irises, five or six in every eye. I tried to add some round catch lights with a brush, but I think it lost a few hairs somewhere in the process of making this doll because I couldn't put a nice dot. So I swapped for this sculpting tool with a ball on each end. I also added some dots, like she has on the claws. 
They are now white, but I'll be painting them blue later to tone them down. I'm also going to fill the irises with a very light layer of each eye's color. You will see it after styling her hair. As the last detail, I added tiny white freckles and made the bottom lashes more visible by adding a bit of white. Now it's finally time to stand up to our demons and take care of the hairstyle. I did the first ponytail as a test of camera so I can show you how to make it and not how to struggle while making it. So I have my section prepared and I'm taking one of the strands from the back and wrapping it around a few times. Then I'm splitting it into two parts, keeping one of them in place and wrapping the other one one more time so they are really separated. I'm putting them together again and this time I'm making a split to three parts and make a braid. I'm wrapping the braids a few times around the ponytail and adding two pins, one in the ponytail so it stays vertically and the other to pin the small braid to the head. Simple hairstyle without using any glue or heat, but it works only on the dolls with soft heads so you can pin the things. I did the same to the second portion of the hair. I rarely do something extra with the hair because I'm just not interested in hairstyles in general, but I've seen Rodney Rainbow on Instagram making this crazy braided hairstyle using knots, swirls, twists and probably a lot of glue. <laughs> and I got inspired by their work. I want to avoid glue because I don't know how it's going to age, so I'll be using a lot of pins instead. But check their Instagram. And because all I know how to do is braids, let's make some more. I thought she still misses something alien, so the braided ponytails are going to be our little alien antennas. And for the middle one, I thought we could make a heart, because she's a girly girl and she likes cute things. I tried to reroute the hair with the hairstyle in mind, but there are some spots without hair, but thankfully she's a traveler from another world and can grow pearls on her head or whatever these are going to be, but never mind, I got these decorative pins from Barb and I will use a lot of them to cover the bald spots. I love that they give the look a bit more shine and color and it's just like funky vibe. I'm securing the heart in place and now it's the difficult part. What to do with the back? That's the main question. I wondered if maybe a ponytail would be nice or a half ponytail or maybe the blue hair wrapped with the braids. Alien fashion certainly doesn't have any boundaries, but my hairstyling skills have a lot of boundaries. And because nothing looked good with the straight braids and curled hair, I decided to do the inevitable step. So the more I try with the braids, the worse this becomes. And I will not lie to myself that I like it. I don't. I, I never did. So we're straightening it with this. Also removing like half of the tinsel. So this is the side with tinsel removed. Here is the tinsel that waits for removing and you see that there's so much more. And I think I like this side better because the tinsel didn't really behave well while boil washing and straightening. So yeah, it needs to go. I can't believe I removed tinsel. I make tinsel in my own hair every two months. I love tinsel hair, but here it has to go. Now when I have waves, it's easy to style the straight ends with a hair straightener to match the blue hair and make like cute little waves. And this is how she looks. The colors are awesome, the braids make the perfect amount of details and the textures finally match. Or at least this is what I'm telling myself. But I'm really really happy how she's turning out. Let's accessorize. A cheerleader is nothing without her pom-poms and this girl has many hands, so I will make a few. I'm not a pom-pom making expert and with any topic that I'm not the best at, I just talk myself through it. So I will just slip it onto the yarn. This is me entirely talking to myself, so you don't have to be listening to me as well. And now you have to like shove it through here and it's gonna hurt a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> And now tie it together. Yes. Now we can slip it off, I think. Where's the, where's the, oh no, the rubber band. From that point, I was confident I could make it work. All that was left was to cut up the yarn loops, fluff them up a little bit to give them that round shape, and give the pom pom a trim, and repeat a few more times. Do we need a zodiac high? collection for merch now? <laughs> Damn it. 
I think we will prepare something, but you can get all the previous zodiacs. Well, not all of them. I need to start writing ads for our merch because I keep rambling. Merchantarium.com. Just mer go there. Thanks. This will be ASMR. The other side is so shiny. Oh no, the tip got broken. We really wanted to give this girl a tail, so I 3D printed a modified Scorpio tail I found online. I removed supports and thought it would be easy to assemble because the files had numbers on the inside, but they got lost in the layer lines. Now, these two, I believe, are the biggest ones and are the same piece and they go like this. And the rest... <laughs> is a mystery. I swear, I was like, oh, I'm not gonna pay attention because they have numbers in them. I managed to gauge them by size and I think they are laid out correctly. Snake, I'm gonna try not to string you along. <laughs> yeah, bad jokes are kind of my brand at this point. I used some wire to thread some elastic through the tail and then I thought that the tail would not support itself too well. So I used the same wire I used to thread to support it a bit more. Good. Hola. Kurde, a nie powiesz Jak nie nakapujesz, to możemy iść. I know I say this in almost every video, but this needs a bit of a color fix. Why leave something as it is when I know I can make it look a bit more balanced and just just let me say better. <laughs> so I'm painting the blue parts a different blue and the green parts yellow. Cancer has her name written in Japanese on her skirt and I thought maybe I can write something in an alien language on the skirt. If you know alienish, you can read it. I don't know what it says. A beam of green light came from the sky and told me what to draw. So don't ask me what is there. I'm painting it with pink because I think despite all the green and blue, her favorite color is actually pink. I tried to record the tail assembly, but I failed to do both recording and assembly. And I asked Barb for help and she did it off camera. I guess it was easier. But basically one of the threads go into one of the holes and go back through the other. Then it goes back to the tail and it's tied with the other string after the first segment of the tail. And the wire goes to the body through one of the holes. I painted her nails blue and pink and it's time to add the Scorpio sign symbol. With a little help from our patrons, I decided to add it on one of the hands and make it lime green. I glue the skirt to the body so it lays flat and this is how the outfit looks together. Putting the head on the body was a bit of a challenge because of all the pins in her head, like that's a death trap. <laughs> I'm adding a pair of earrings and a few bracelets and I'm also gluing these nail decorations on the skirt. And with these few details, she's ready. is how she turned out. I think she's super cute and definitely matches the teenage girl aesthetic of our cancer girl the most. I think they could be the main characters of the Zodiac High cartoon if there ever was one. It's also super cool that we finally were able to use Wedana, also known as the easier pronounced Webarella. I don't know which one of these is better, to be honest. <laughs> I remember us buying this doll ages ago on like an auction during like a break in a concert at like a Philharmony or something and waiting for a worthy project for her. I'm really happy the concept of the Zodiac High School is cementing itself in this series. We have four more dolls to make in this series, so I hope the concept comes back as well. Maybe you can think of some other roles for the rest of the cast we made so far? Not all of them have to be students, they can be supporting characters. Like, I think Leo is the principal. <laughs> Let us know in the comments down below. Make sure to follow us on Instagram for some sneak peeks and subscribe for future videos. 
have an enchanted day. No. <laughs> well, have an enchanted day and we'll see you next time. Bye! This video was made thanks to our Patreons. The biggest credit goes to our top Lost Sister Tears supporters, our new sister Wilviana Wolfie, Lee, Mary Helen Burns, Call Me Ash, Barb from the Future, Erin McCoy and Red X. We also thank our cousin tier patrons Jessica Shresta, Awkward Cat, Nice Low, Kito Kato, Burp BTW, Nala, oh my god, Nala Kershulte, Ashley Priest, Aquarius Sketches 13, Ryu, Emerald Havoc, Krista Hopper, Zippy McAdoo, Emma Thomas, Yumi Azura, Galena Harcyon, Lucky Ducky Lulu, Ceres Eden, Leon Draws Things, Mavi, Gianet, Josephine Falk, Kaylee M, Melissa Navoa, Rinth, Fun of TA, Catherine G, Ashley, Etwell, Elise Sherbet, Zari, Amelia Blackwood, Andrea Brigadier, Ghostly Gardens, Brianna Tegan, The Barbie Witch, Bowen, Inca, Stephanie, Tiffany Jeffords, Karaho, Landy Monk, Jane Beck, Karabu, Sibs Party, Dragon Art Customs, Ninja Star Dezino, Dream Up, and last but not least, Catherine Nodden. Thanks, guys. See you at the live stream in a few. Bye bye!